Should I just shout at you randomly and just take you completely off guard? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, that's right. We're doing this. Ah, oh, crap. Ah, I know. Ah, let me minimize this. Let me minimize this. Let me, let me put this away. And, ah. All right. All right. Here we go. Conceived in quarantine and born into a world we never would have imagined. A podcast featuring two friends, outrageous facts, and a countdown clock that always wins. This is 26 and 26, the A to Z of everything. Brandon! No! Brandon! <laughs> okay, I Any hope base? none of that... I hope none of that's usable. I hope we have to just cut There's that from the beginning and no say hi, way. folks. Here, <laughs> no way the audio comes clip through clear on that. So yeah, probably not. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> I'm fantastic. How are you, man? I'm good. It is three thousand degrees outside, but I'm loving yes. it. I don't care. Three? It's Arizona. We're tough. That's how we do. Three thousand degrees. What over twenty some fires actively burning? Oh yeah, uh, yeah It yeah. is summer's here, folks. Summer is here. Yeah, we are in the bellies oh. of hell right now. But you know what? Well, this is. I live for it. I love Arizona in the summer. I'm not going to complain. Also, also, we can't act like we're special with the hot weather. Oh Shout my. out Portland, 106 degrees. Actually, and then what? I just read about a city uh, in Canada. It set the highest temperature yep. record three days in a row in Canada and then burnt down on the fourth day. <laughs> Dude, it is insane. I have a friend who's driving from um, Phoenix to Alaska where he's like moving his whole family and he's like, I'm following along on Instagram, like his little videos and he's going through like the borders. He's sweating. It, it's oh, on yeah. one day. It was hotter in Canada than yep. it was here. Yep. It was hotter in so Seattle weird. one day than it was so here. weird. Like it just, I don't know what, I mean, I think I know what's happening. I think we all know what's happening. Yeah. I don't like that. We know what's happening. Um, but we just got to rake those forests, folks. You got to rake those forests. Well, I mean, and it's like we're not going to be in a worse world if we imply, employ more forest, you know, rangers. That's no. going to be good. <laughs> we're, no. we're going to be in a better, happier place. <laughs> Yes, yes, that is the, – the, the, the raking forest was more of a joke that it's way more than just raking forest. But yeah, no, we really do need to like kind of collectively pull our heads out of our rear ends and, uh, and make sure that uh, – well, we don't continuously burn down because that's really all we're doing at this point. Yeah, um, that was actually one of my retrospect looking back. I was like, I would have liked to have been a forest ranger. That would be fun. That is actually Hell something that I've considered. I might, might when we finish recording this, I might start looking for <laughs> national forest service <laughs> job listings. But, but before I start looking for okay. uh, national forest service job listings, Brandon, tell me what is your highlight because we did not discuss this before the recording. I just realized this, so I, I hope um, you have one. Yeah, I do. It's actually uh, kind of related to what we were just talking about. Oh, Spent a right. lot of time up north, um, okay. as always. And in, during the summer, it's kind of an easy escape. Anybody says, hey, let's go north. Let's do it. Um, even if it's for you know tough reasons, you, know, you still go up there, enjoy some beautiful weather. Um, got to see some late afternoon showers. Beautiful time of year oh, if you are in like? northern Arizona. I know. What's the rain like? <laughs> oh, so beautiful. Shout out to Pine Top. Love you for the last oh. 20 years. Yeah. Well, my highlight is uh, air conditioning because I can't get out of the valley. Um, so I'm glad you got out of the valley. I stayed in the valley and I enjoyed uh, modern comforts of life. <laughs> it Dude, has how been... important is a good working AC oh, right now? Word. It is. The mornings haven't been terrible for the last week, uh, but the late evening, it just. It'll cook you. Yeah. It is. Well, let's qualify. It, What's hot for you? Uh, I think I think we discovered this about a week ago that I think I've got a higher tolerance. I I don't mind the hundreds. Like outside, no. I don't sure. mind the hundreds. Even the hundreds and tens. Like it's Ooh, I'm not see, happy. I'm not I'm not happy in the one tens. But but for me, like anything over 105 is just hot. 
Like for me, 105, 115, 120, like you, you, you hit a threshold and it's just, I'm, I'm hot. I'm uncomfortable. It doesn't matter if it's another five degrees hot or 10 degrees. Like I hit this peak. I'm hot. Over and 110, that's for me. That's the okay. threshold. I won't even talk about it until it's over 110. Once it's like 111, <laughs> then I'll be like, ooh, a little bit of a doozy today. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's got to be over 110. But we're lucky. I mean, the, the, I know that the, the the stereotypical things say it's a dry heat, but yeah. um, it makes a difference. I grew up in Florida oh, yeah. where it, oh man, 90 and 90 degrees humidity yeah. is brutal. Well, that's that's what I've always said comparing it to, to folks back home in Ohio is oh, yeah. when you step into the shade you know. here in Arizona, you get out of the direct sunlight. The air Huge is still relief. hot, but there's immediate relief. You step into the shade in Ohio or, God, in Florida, and yeah, you're out of direct sunlight, but you're still sucking 90-degree water out of the air. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's just – you're still walking through a shower curtain that's set to steam. Like, it's – not a good time. No. But you know what no. is a good time, Brandon? What is a good time, Nathaniel? You running out of time. And I <laughs> have a feeling it's probably going to happen again today. What are we talking about? Today, we are going to be discussing movies and facts regarding the movie industry. So this is actually okay. going to be a pretty fun one. I definitely learned some pretty cool stuff. You uh, you got a favorite movie? Uh, probably. I don't know. I watch a lot of movies and at the same time, like they're also something that gets put on in the background a lot. Mm. So I've, I've watched a, a lot of movies have been on my TV, whether or not I have watched a lot of movies. That's one of those. Cause there've been times where I, that. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's art it's it's, it's no, so many people I, have put so much time into it that's like it's true. i hate looking at my wife when she's on her phone and we're watching the film <laughs> like this is art you know yeah uh, it, it makes me crazy and there's so many small nuances that um you can take from a movie if you're really focused in lord lord of the rings lord of the rings I, sure. i'm gonna have to say is probably my favorite if we're going movie not musical i do have a favorite musical Lord of the Rings, probably the favorite movie. I've got it on Blu-ray, extended cut. And you're right. I'm, it is art. It is. It's really cool. Like, I have all of the features to know what happened behind the scenes. I know I mentioned that I was. we were just talking about how it's art, but I have no doubt that my favorite movie is uh, Kingpin, Woody Harrelson. <laughs> I, I I kid you not. It is. I can watch that movie a thousand, thousand times. That and, like, Hot Rod. Oh, I love Andy Hot Samberg. Rod. I, a, love. I don't know. I just love that, those movies. Um, they're not really, I think, great masterpieces that will go yeah, down in the annals of time. So your favorite movie is 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 art. Hotel. <laughs> yeah, hardly considered art. Kingpin and Hot Rod, love them very much. But I love all movies. I like, you know, the, the samurai movies. I love spaghetti mm. westerns. I love all that okay. different stuff. So uh, I do, I, I'm very much a fan of movies. So what do you say we get to some letters? Let's get to some letters. I've got a timer. You've got a timer. I'm going to hit play and we'll three, two, one, go. All right. Let's do some letters. Let's list some stuff. Um, a, American Psycho. The character was inspired by Tom Cruise. Christian Bale explained that he drew inspiration from a Tom Cruise interview on the David Letterman show, which he was struck by the star's very intense friendliness but also with nothing behind his eyes. So, yeah, Tom Cruise, he, he does creep me out. He has an odd intensity. He's a very weird character that, I don't know, I, I enjoy his, his, his acting, but at the same time, uh, all I, I like think, his movies. All I can think of when I think of Tom Cruise, I, I can only think of him jumping on Oprah's couch. Yeah, that's the thing. That's, that's, the thing. that's and all he also, I can think of. He kind of plays the same character in every movie, but that's those true. movies are still good. Can't that's complain true. about are, it. They are good movies. I, I, at least he's consistent. There are other people. Oh, like he's that. consistent. <laughs> Vin Diesel, Jason Statham. Like there are some people where you get one person and that's it. Fair enough. B for balloons. 
there were 10,297 balloons in the movie Up. The animators who created the pack of balloons in Up actually created every single balloon. The film's effects artist, John Rice, he told Tech Radar that the entire canopy was filled with balloons and we didn't just simulate an outer shell. They actually individually made every one and they counted them out to 10,297. Now, why? My OCD though hates Why? the 297. <laughs> Just not- give me three <laughs> more balloons. What is your problem? How are you going to stop there? Or three pop more. two. Three or more. Two. Just give me divisible by five. It's <laughs> yeah. something. Even that. Yeah. Just whatever. Oh, oh, all right. I've got actually. I've got a fun fact for you about the movie Up. Uh, okay. The next. The next time you watch it, because I know you regularly watch the movie Up. I do love uh, that movie. If actually. you if you look on uh, the boys. Uh, sash of badges, you will notice that there is a tornado badge. That tornado is my high school mascot. The voice of Doug graduated from my high school and is one of the animators for Pixar. It's a Pixar film, right? Yeah. He's one of the main animators for Pixar. He was also the voice of um, Roz in Monsters, Inc., Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Nice so, connection. But uh, so the next time anybody watches that movie and you see his his thing of badges, there's a tornado like right in the middle, a red and gray tornado. And yeah, that's, that's why a pretty I, that's, weird mascot to have for a high school of tornadoes in a place that isn't it subject oh, yeah, to dude, tornadoes. Dude, our rival were the fighting Quakers. We're okay. just none of our stuff makes sense. It's Ohio. Hey, C for KG <laughs> advice. It was Nicolas Cage who first advised Johnny Depp to pursue a career in acting in the middle 80s. Um, that's hmm. I just picturing those two really? getting together and Nick Cage saying to him, you got to be an actor, kid. Um, I'm not a huge fan of most of his movies, but I'm super interested by Depp Nick Cage. Depp or Cage? Well, both, but Nick Cage especially. Okay. It's like I'm interested by him. Like, what are your vibes on Cage? Uh, I like him. Uh, actually, I just watched. Uh, what did I just watch? Uh, Running with the Devil. Oh, okay. Didn't today. see that. I um, love Raising Arizona. That's probably in my mind his best movie. I don't know if I've seen that one. That's one of the best movies I've ever seen. Great one. Check it out if you get a chance. But I know the clock is ticking, so we're moving along. Yeah, we're gonna get some yeah. letters done today. No, we're D. Not. DreamWorks film producer Jeffrey Katzenberg revived the Walt Disney Studios by producing some of their biggest films ever. Little Mermaid, Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin. I mean, all the Disney movies from my generation, Mm -hmm. um, he's basically responsible for. And um, he requested a promotion after coming up with those mega hits. He was met with that request by being fired. Yeah, get out! He swore revenge against the Disney company and founded DreamWorks Studio. Um, It's Disney's all promotion. (laughs) Not with that resume. Give me a break. What's he got to do? I mean, seriously, it's like, I, I, I mean, the guy is a juggernaut. That being said, even though he left, I have a feeling Disney's going to be fine. What was his, what was his title? Executive producer, executive film producer. Huh. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a bold strategy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and like, now, Hey, you want a, pro- you want a promotion? Yeah. You're fired. I'm trying to think of what the last dream work, like what the, the last Disney major way. DreamWorks production was. Oh, there! But, DreamWorks does very, very, and every, very oh, yeah. well. Oh yeah, yeah. So, but speaking, right. um, they profit well. And speaking of profit, let's do E for enormous profits, and that's uh, a Marvel movie is the highest grossing film of all time as of Shocking. September 2020. Do you know what the movie is? Uh, Endgame. Endgame, released in 2019, is the highest grossing film of all time, making approximately $2.8 billion as of September 2020. It is the fourth film in the Avengers series and broke both domestic and international records for the largest opening weekends ever. Huh. That's That's a lot of money. It's weird. Of all the movies ever made, it's a Marvel comic movie. Ah. I don't know. At the at the way that they've built it up, I'm not that surprised. Still haven't seen it. Need to. 
We've yeah, got, you we've need, had this. We're still this in like discussion. Generation One Marvel, but we'll, oh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll get you caught up. Yeah, um, you're probably familiar with Batman. F yep. is for Funny Night. That is because <laughs> Bill Murray was considered for the role of Batman. In addition to the actors Kevin Costner, Pierce Brosnan, Mel Gibson, Bill Murray was considered for the caped crusader role in 1989 film Batman. It wasn't until the director was brought on board, Tim Burton, he's the one who chose Michael Keaton. Oh, okay. Imagine how that would have changed the franchise if Bill Murray was the Dark Knight. Wow. That's... It would have probably been more like the TV version from the <laughs> '60s that was like boom, yeah. pow. Yeah, yeah, it definitely would have been a little more comical. But at the at the same time, I could though, see it. at the same time, yep, it might be like that secret formula that just works. Well, and Bill Murray's done dark, so I yeah. can see him yeah. pulling it off as this kind of like, you know, maybe he relies on he- it, dark humor a little bit more. I would be really curious to see Tim Burton did that one. Yeah, OG. Uh, it well, might have gone. Uh, at least out. according to the fact that I copy and paste it to this <laughs> list. Um, G for guess what? The raptor sounds in Jurassic Park are actually mating tortoises. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Apparently, uh, it turns out it was um, uh, any of, if you watch any of the Jurassic Park movies and you hear the sounds from those velociraptors, um, it's just Solid. tortoises doing the deed. Get it. Get it. So get, it. It's, get it. Get yeah, it. Yeah, that's uh, I. It's amazing what gets used in sound design for movies. Sure. The Foley uh, work, insane. Oh, it's, yeah, I love, I love finding when weird noises get used for, uh, for videos. Like, I mean, that's a, uh, uh, Darth Vader, his mask. You know how that sound was made? <sighs> yeah. Do you know what that is? No, it's a it's a lavalier microphone stuck inside a scuba respirator. Oh, I just assumed it was a guy going. <laughs> 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 then talking into a fan, and, you know? and then talking into a fan. No, um, yeah, it's sexy turtles and respirators. Exactly. H <laughs> for how much Toto from the movie Wizard of Oz mm-hmm. earned more than the Munchkins. In that movie. In fact, it was a lot more. The canine actor earned $125 a week for his efforts, while the actors playing the Munchkins brought in only $50 a week. And, and to be fair, bullshit. can you name a Munchkin <laughs> from that movie? Did they have names? I, even even more so to my point. So it kind of makes sense. Toto was like a, you know, a massive role, a, a figurative role. Toto's or? a dog. a dog we can name and a munchkin we cannot so Uh, yeah toto also probably doesn't have rent (laughs) yeah that's probably true (laughs) and boy it's nothing but drama from those munchkins man you keep hearing like on set how how what a horrible situation it was Uh, um speaking of horrible situations i for Incredible Sorry. Hulk, originally they had a lot of horrible situations come up when they were making the comic because the original orig- Hulk was supposed to be gray. Marvel's Incredible Hulk um, is just a well is so well known for his green body and his testy temperament. However, he was supposed to originally be gray. Stanley and Jack Kirby, who invented the character, um, told Gizmodo that it was supposed to be a riff on Mr. Hyde. But because of the printing press issues, they said, you know what? Only in the first couple issues is he gray. After that, green, let's just go with it. FYI. Yeah. So that's... I, I'm not going to ask questions because that really will just derail us. My brain is going 18 different. That's that's cool. Well, then I'll that's ask actually, you a question. Really, okay. When you think of the movie industry, where do you think of? Hang on. I'm sorry. When I think of the movie industry, where do I think of? What geographic area in this country do you think of when you think of the movie industry? I mean, the easy answer is Hollywood. Of course, obviously, 100%. But the film industry got its start in New Jersey. The American film industry began not in California, but on the opposite coast. Many studios turned out in New Jersey out of Bayonne and Fort Lee at the beginning of the 20th century. Now, these studios include 
Fox, Paramount, Universal, really? all got their start in Jersey. Imagine if they stayed. Think of how that would have changed the landscape oh. of this country. What would LA be like without the entertainment industry? New York would suck a lot more. That's what I'm thinking about. Like, that whole region of the country would be insane. Oh, that, uh, that, <laughs> now I'm just imagining like a map of the United States and the U S just like tipping into the Atlantic ocean because the Eastern seaboard just has everybody on the, uh, like a cantilevered United States, just about like a, <laughs> like a, yeah, like an ice, <laughs> like a shelf of ice just about to slide in. Like we put everybody in one spot. No doubt. No was, doubt. Was that for the letter H I'm assuming for Hollywood? That was J for Jersey. Did you do did we do H? Did I think? Yeah, how we much for H? the Munchkins? Oh yeah, okay. For some reason, I thought we were on H. I don't remember my alphabet. Okay, nah, so neither do I. We've done. We haven't done this enough to know the <laughs> alphabet yet. K for keep drive-ins alive. Um, the first drive-in theater opened in 1933, uh, June 6. Richard Hollingshead opened the first drive-in theater in Camden, New Jersey. Not a shock. People watched the British comedy. Wives beware. They paid 25 cents per car. And though the drive-in's popularity has waned in recent decades, there are only 320, 321 theaters uh, still open in the United States as of June of last year. Do you like uh, drive-ins? I love them. I, I love them as well. I actually grew up, uh, there was one about 15 minutes north of my hometown. So I actually grew up in high school, like going to the drive-in was a very real date night going, sure. growing up in high school, um, which was really cool because I know it's not for a lot of people in my generation. I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was a, a I, I honestly prefer the drive-in to the real theater. Sure. hundred like, percent. It just, especially because we would go on a pickup truck and we would take like Back a dozen, in. exactly. Take a dozen blankets, all of the pillows. You, you make all your own snacks. You're not paying $7 for popcorn. You've got a 50 gallon trash bag <laughs> that you've been popping for three weeks in anticipation of this. Dude, I, I don't remember a single movie I've ever seen at the drive-in, but I might have a lot of memories of sneaking into the drive-in. They had one, another shout out to Pine Top, Arizona. And we'd go up there <laughs> in the summer and it was funny because like you'd have a driver of a suburban that's huge and it's got like three boxes of donuts all this candy and it's like one person because they used to charge by person there not by car mm. so we would all like lay down and be hiding underneath the blankets <laughs> and stuff and i i remember that usually was more memorable than the actual movie was oh, yeah. sneaking in and i don't know if we saved you know six dollars but still very uh, i love those memories l Lord of the Pass, Sean Connery, rest in peace, oh, rest turned in down peace. the Gandalf role in really? Lord of the Rings. Ooh. Um, yeah, Ooh. He, he said, I, I read oh. the book, I read the script, oh. I saw the movie, <laughs> I still don't understand it. Um, he's passed <laughs> that, on that a, sounds a like lot something. of blockbusters. I was yeah. really surprised. Yeah, I mean, when you're James Bond, and as far as I'm considered, as far as I'm concerned, the only James Bond, you don't need any other roles. No. Um, but I, I'm actually, I, I'll, I'll go out and say I'm, I'm glad that he turned it down. I think Sir Ian McClellan was the perfect fit for it, and and we'll never know. Just like we'll never know how he would have been in another role he turned down as John Hammond in Jurassic Park, the old man. Oh, really? He turned down the Morpheus role in The Matrix. That Could you imagine anyone other than Lawrence Fishburne in that role? No. He no. turned it down. It was offered to him. He also turned down Albus Dumbledore in Harry Potter. Um, he turned down Rick Deckard These in Blade are... Runner, famously played by Harrison yeah. Ford. Yeah. Um, he turned down, this would have been great to see him in, as Simon Gruber in Die Hard. <laughs> he would have been great in that movie. So, yeah, oh. he's passed on a lot of the movies. Wow. So that's why he's L, Lord of the Pass. That's it, that's impressive. I also like the tie-in with yeah, yeah. That was well done. That was well done. M, <laughs> most profitable. The most profitable film of all time. Not the most money made. The most profitable film. Can you guess? Can you stab at it? Mm. Not mm. the most money made. That I was know. Avengers. Yeah, that was Avengers. Most profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Oh, Passion of the Christ. It was not Passion of the Christ, okay. but it was Paranormal Ten Activity. Thanks to oh, a microscopic okay. yeah. budget, yeah. The, um, major success of the box office in 2007, um, it scored an investment, a return on investment of almost 20,000%. Um, the movie only cost sixty thousand dollars to make. Uh, that is that, absolutely yeah. incredible. Sixty thousand dollars to make and four hundred thousand dollars to market it. But I mean, sixty thousand dollars. Most luxury cars cost more than more than that. I, <laughs> Dude, not even luxury cars at this point. Like, yeah, a yeah, nice a, truck. A, yeah, a nice <laughs> truck will run you sixty grand. That's that is. And actually, I'd be, I'd love to see the finances for the rest of that franchise because they did. Yeah, whoever what, the like, producers were, five did not them? produce these next movies, and for not profitable, no. and that is the two least profitable films of all time. Both take place on Mars. Want to guess? Uh, the Martian. I'm assuming is one of them. But that was a very yeah. profitable movie. Oh, was it? Yeah, I thought it they had. Well. A, I thought they had a lot of issues with it, though. It um, may have, but it doesn't rank okay. as number one and number two oh, least then, profitable. Then I don't know if they both take place on Mars. One um, is John Carter holding the number two spot. Carter. It lost $127 million, but Oof. it was only outdone by Mars Needs Moms from that, the same year, actually. Mars Needs Moms. That sounds... Yeah. I, <laughs> it lost $143 million, the worst return on investment of all time. Obviously, what not produced the... by the paranormal activity folks. Clearly, what was the plot? That Mars needs moms. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I was not one of the people who supported that film. It doesn't sound like you were either. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It, will, it also sounds like a film that may not be like a normal theater release. I think I do. I think I do remember the poster as I was looking it up. We'll see okay. if we can't share that. Okay. Um, we'll but it, it that was, down. yeah, not a nothing great. It was actually scary how bad it was. And speaking of scary, oh, for outstandingly evil. Ooh. Three major horror franchises were inspired by the same serial killer. It takes one Ooh. particularly terrifying creep to inspire the characters: Hannibal Lecter, mm. Norman Bates. And Leatherface, all inspired by the man, the serial killer, Ed Ginn. Wow. I mean, the dude who made, you know, lampshades from human skin yep. when they found his place yep. in Wisconsin. I mean, this guy was a nightmare. And the worst part is, another thing we'll probably try to share in the video and check it out on YouTube if you'd like. Um, the dude looks like every guy you've ever seen in a small town. I mean, I kid you oh, yeah. not, I would pick him up. Um, hitchhiking, which oh, is yeah. probably why he was yep. as successful as he was, or he, he, as he was passionate about his work, you know. Ooh, yeah, he definitely enjoyed what he did, and you're right. He looked like a very, I mean, he was he was your average Midwestern white dude that, like, if I'm not mistaken, like, was actively involved in his church and his community. Like, he was a he normal looks like dude. It. Looks like, like it. it. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, you, you know, the yeah, American just, Gothic painting where the guy with the pitchfork yeah, standing next to us, yep. he looks like that yeah. guy. I yeah. mean, you just, yeah. I would totally pick him up hitchhiking. Just with um, a really creepy lampshade. Oh, dude. He's like, I got to put this lampshade in the back. You're like, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice shade. Um, P for Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock's, Alfred Hitchcock's movie, Psycho, yep. was the first film to show a toilet being flushed on screen. Now, breaking that, barriers. <laughs> that was the thing, though, is that when I was looking up facts for this episode, it's this actually, one kept coming up over and over. And every list that you were they were compiling, like interesting facts about the movie industry, this one was like kind of at the top. So it must have been a really big deal at some point. That yeah. Oh, so so what? Okay. Oh no, it was a TV show. I was going to say you're telling me that the first interracial kiss being on Star Trek wasn't didn't make your list of. <laughs> Of facts, but the first toilet being flush, but it was a film, not a TV show. So, speaking a, of TV, Q for Quentin ooh. Tarantino ooh. Pl played an Elvis impersonator on The Golden Girls. Wait, and what? I did, yeah, Quentin Tarantino played an <laughs> Elvis impersonator on Golden Girls. Check it out. And I'd also challenge you to find something better for the letter Q. That's about as good as it gets. <laughs> so, moving along, we're going to try to knock out some letters here. R. 
Reed Hastings said he was partially inspired to start Netflix after racking up a $40 late fee on a VHS copy of Apollo 13. Five minutes Ooh, great film. Great film. You know he was complaining to his buddy. He's like, what are you going to do about it? Late fees or late fees? And he's like, oh, I'm going to start this company. Um, so, S. That's kind of the most pro-revenge thing I can think of. I'm going to start my own business and then put this other business out of business. I, you know when they finally, like, Blockbuster gave in, he was just like, Excellent, excellent. <laughs> it's all come together. All because of a $40 late fee on Apollo 13. Had Blockbuster not had late fees, they may still be in business today. You know he showed up to that last location that gave him the fee and like peed on their door when they closed. <laughs> like, <laughs> just burnt a million dollars on the front door. <laughs> S, Steven Spielberg. Um, he has been thanked more times than God in the Academy Awards. Steven Spielberg <laughs> is pretty much everywhere in the film industry, producing, directing films, uh, left and right, but it only makes sense that he had been thanked more times than God in the history of the Academy Awards. I mean, I think in the movie industry, Spielberg is God, though. Yeah. Uh, do you have a it's, favorite Spielberg movie? Uh, not off the top of my head, honestly. I'm They're all running in a jumble right now. They do. For Ooh. me, I definitely... All-time favorite, it's got to be Hook. Uh, Robin Williams, Ooh. just at that right age of when Ooh. I was a kid. Um, but obviously yeah. Saving Private Ryan is probably yeah. one of the greats. Schindler's List, Lincoln, Catch Me If You Can, Jurassic Park, yeah. um, Indiana there's, Jones franchise. Yeah, there's – I don't know. I, guess, I don't think I have one. I don't think I Ready have Ready Player a one, one was even pretty good. Ready Player One wasn't bad. Um, what was the um, Super 8? Super 8 was the one that he did a couple of years ago. A couple years it. ago. I don't know. Yeah, I'm fairly certain that's him. But you've got Let's like move along. We're going to get these letters left. going. Get them going. T, movie trailers. Movie trailers, trailers used to be screened after the movie. And that's why they're called trailers because they yeah. trailed the yeah. main attraction. That makes sense. The first trailer premiered in 1912. Um, it was for a Broadway show called The Pleasure Seekers. It wasn't a movie, but it was just like a commercial for it. Uh, trailers started actually spreading in popularity. Originally, they were produced by the theaters themselves. Had nothing to do with like oh. other movies or the movie industry. But That's in 1916, um, the movie studios, probably still in Jersey, uh, took the reins of it. Probably. I guess that's why they're now called previews. Because they no I longer guess trail. No you hear them sometimes preview. called previews. Oh, yeah, movie previews. Okay. Actually, yeah. That's look at us actually using words or names that make sense. <laughs> ATM machine. Don't you it's redundant. Pin um, number. You. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You. Did you know there was a movie theater there? The White House has a movie theater. I know, I, I, I'm stretching, but come on, give me a break. It's you. Um, did you know that there was a movie theater there? The White House has a movie theater. It's the first um, room. Uh, it was actually converted from a cloak room. I didn't realize this. I didn't that, know that. How many cloaks do you have to have to dedicate a room to them? I mean, Let imagine having a, a need for a is... cloak room. Well, that that makes. I mean, that's a closet. That's and, and for the White House, you're the li, you're the literal Their leader of the room free seats world. Forty four people. Well, that was that was my thing. Cloakroom <laughs> makes sense. Cloakroom big enough to be renovated into a theater. That's a different story. Where like, are you going to put this theater? It's like <laughs> ah, just throw it in the yeah. cloakroom. What are the cloakroom next to the jackets? This is a cool one because it relates back to here to Arizona. V for very early start. Um, director Steven Spielberg made his very first film for a merit badge. It was called The Last Gunfight. It was nine minutes long and recorded on eight millimeter film. Um, it required his, uh, it fulfilled his requirement to earn his photography merit badge for a Boy Scout when he was just 11 years old. And it was filmed right here in Arizona. And I know the clock's going, so we're yes, about you're to under run a out minute. of time. You're under a minute. So W for Road a Language. The directors for the film Despicable Me actually created their own language yes. for the minions, and it yes. was called Minionese. Yes, and it's uh, it's a mashup of several languages, isn't it? Is that right? 
I want to say that it, there's actually like some whatever the term would be for the language. There's some. While you think about like, it, I'm going to yeah. give you the letter X, <laughs> and that's X for X rated. Brian De Palma received the first X rating by the M- Motion Picture Association of America. It was in November of 1968, um, and the film was called Greetings. It received the first X rating, and it starred Robert De Niro. Oh, we are out of time, but I'll finish this one. De Niro, he was given the rating for its sexually explicit content, I had to go to an X-rated theater in Tucson, Arizona to see the movie Kids in the 90s. Um, and Wait, I still really? haven't, I, I haven't felt clean since. Yeah, they only aired um, Kids in porno theaters. Uh, so if you wanted to watch it when it came out in theaters, you had to go to an adult film that, location. I don't know how I feel about that entire sentence. <laughs> well, see, I, the thing was, is I, I didn't quite realize what happens in those theaters. And when I was there, it was just oh. college kids going to see like, you know, a movie. And, but I didn't understand there's that, not a lot that, of cleaning no, turnover that no. takes place. That's also um, where Gilbert Gottfried loses careers. That was, that was him, wasn't it? No, no it was, no. The, um, I know who you're it talking about, but it wasn't yeah. Gilbert Godfrey. Let's oh, just okay. go with Gilbert Godfrey because <laughs> you know what? Why not? Why not? Gilbert Godfrey. That's where he lost his career. <laughs> Ah, well, once again, we got close. We got to X, Nathaniel. You got, way, you got way closer than the last one. Again, the last one you had, what, T-U-V-W-X-Y-Z. I missed you only had Y and Z. So there you go. You moved up five letters. And yep. and I'll give you I'll give you one pity fact. None of this, you get one pity fact. Eh, it might take two pity facts. No, no, no. <laughs> you get one. So pick Y or Z. Okay, okay. I'm going to go with Z because it's interesting to me. Um, Z for $0. In 2014, Netflix spent $0, as in nada, zip, zilch, on marketing. Oh, okay. That's way better than I thought. On the marketing of its DVD rental business. However, that same year, over 6 million people still used it, even though they marketed it with $0. That's... Well, but they marketed and it was the DVD D- rental. Yeah, they marketed the DVD rental side of it, not. But they still would have dumped money into like general net for Netflix advertising. Uh, I'm not. Uh, for me, that's how the fact came up. It was just yeah. more of the, because at the time, I well, think in 2014, it was primarily still the the lion's share of their business was the DVD rentals, like them coming in the mail and those little slips. Yeah, if you ever I feel like they that. would have transitioned more to streaming at that point. My my point being sure, though, 14. there's su- there's such a a standard though that all you have to do is remind people like, hey, you can stream. Netflix online and people are like, oh yeah, and I know you well enough that I can get a DVD too and still utilize that service. Like you're yeah. so syn- your service is so synonymous with your name that and it was you cool, don't even like have to that advertise. Mail. Oh yeah, yeah. Now I don't think I ever actually did a, a Netflix DVD subscription. My family, we were a Redbox family. Ah, oh, sure, 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 so, sure. Redbox and, and actually Blockbuster. We had a Blockbuster in our in our town. Back in the day. But. I remember the old Friday nights of the Blockbuster. You had to get there early. And my favorite thing to do was go check the return counter before they went back out to see uh, that's where the good yep. movies were. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's, yeah. We, sorry, that one's not in stock. I'm not oh, old. no, no. It I'm is. Not old. It's over there. <laughs> <laughs> People like under like 20 are going, Blockbuster counter under returns. 20. What? Friday nights? This is how you spent your Friday nights? Dude, I'm almost 30 and I'm getting your references like this much. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, probably, probably. All right. All right. Well, let's be thankful and grateful. Well, as always, we are thankful and grateful for the music that was heard in this episode that you what, may be what? hearing right now. Probably. And uh, that now. is for maybe why well, not? Let's may, we'll make it so now. for this one, possibly. We'll, we'll do it for this one now. All right, you're All hearing right. it now. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mike DeChico and a Domesticated Robot, thank you very yeah. much for the music. I'm also thankful for um, just being able to have this outlet creatively. It's always fun to kind of look up facts and, you know, just nerd out on, as my sister describes it, stoner catnip. 
So, um, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely enjoy, you know, going through these facts. I hope you enjoy it as well. What about you, Nathaniel? What are you thankful and grateful for? Uh, I'm thankful and grateful for, for my friends. I've been working on a bunch of different side projects uh, over the last week or so, and it's just a bunch. It's a little bit of everything. It's uh, I've got the podcast going on with you. I've got a video project going on with another friend. I'm working with Mike and Domesticated Robot. And we've got some really cool things uh, in motion right there. So I'm just I'm thankful to not have just one thing that I do. And air conditioning. And air conditioning. Definitely my highlight <laughs> is that I'm grateful for air conditioning. Uh, <laughs> Brandon, <laughs> Brandon, take us out of here. We leave you now in love and light and this. The difference between life and the movies is that a script has to make sense and life doesn't. Joseph make quits. Thanks everybody. All right, Nathaniel, in under 26 seconds and in alphabetical order, tell us how they can find us. Go! A, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you listen to podcasts. F, Facebook, 26 and 26 A to Z. I, Instagram, 26 and 26 A to Z. T, Twitter, 26 and 26 A to Z. W, website, www.26 and 26.com. Y, YouTube, 26 and 26, the A to Z of everything. Time! 